take a moment just to enjoy the funky angles that you get on this futuristic carbine. This isn't really like anything else that I've seen out on the market. It has all these complementary angles running through the handguard into the receivers and then back here into the stock. And as you can see, we have a wonderful coloration going on too. To me, this is just a wonderful example of how good industrial art can be. Now in the past, I've tested a handful of CMMGs. I've tested some of their carbines, their pistols. Um, I've been able to test their big old uh, 6.5 Creedmoor Endeavor rifle, which has a 24 inch barrel. And I've been able to get that thing on target out at a mile. I killed a hog with it that was running just hell for leather um, away kind of off to the side. At, uh, at 400 yards. I've been able to use their Resolute in 350 Legend on, out deer hunting. And each one of these has been very functional, but now it's kind of cool to see how pretty something can be. Now this also has a, a whole bunch of upgrades. You saw that when we took this out to distances from 200 to 500 meters, that we were able to quickly and accurately knock down targets uh, using a couple different sighting systems. That was an excellent test case that this is not just for looks, it's not just for close up use like a lightweight AR-10 carbine can be, but that this can actually be stretched out to some of those longer distances and do some really serious work when it comes down to it. All right, now let's break this thing down. This is all based around a 16 inch stainless barrel that as you can see is black under there. This is black nitrided, like a lot of the other parts that are gonna be in here, like the, uh, the bolt, the bolt carrier group. And what that means is that this is going to, uh, it's gonna be very easy to clean. It's gonna resist a lot of corrosion. It's going to resist rust and things that might come from the atmosphere. And it's just gonna be one that lasts a long time. It makes the bore harder and you should be able to get a longer service life out of this rifle than with some of the others that you'll run across. That 16 inch barrel has kind of a medium profile. It's, it's somewhat lightweight and that makes this an eight pound carbine. Heavy for an AR-15, but lightweight for an AR-10. And so this is one that I would have no qualms about uh, taking out into the brush to kill hogs or deer or whatever. This is something that should be relatively easy to move around. The gas system is fixed on this one. It has a fixed gas block. And as you can see, it is a rifle length system. So this should have just a very smooth recoil overall, uh, a really easy recoil impulse. One of the things that CMMG does really well is timing their gas systems. And so as long as you're shooting uh, supersonic ammo, then this should just run wonderfully in whatever conditions uh, that you have it in. Out on the front, we have one of their new muzzle brakes. And this is something that I actually did a whole breakout video on after using these out at uh, the CMMG range day. This seems to take a lot of its design cues from the Ultradyne muzzle brakes, where you have these veins that are vented backward at an angle. Um, so it's going to blast the gases kind of back at a 45. It also has a couple of vents up at the top to help keep the muzzle down when you're shooting quickly. And in our testing, it worked really well. This is a very effective muzzle brake. This would be good for uh, prone use or for offhand. Is it loud? You bet your sweet aunt's bippy it is. It is really, really loud. So uh, watch out for your buddies next to you. You can always tame this by throwing a suppressor on, but uh, just know that it is effective and it is really, really loud. Moving our way back to the bolt carrier group. This isn't anything that's completely insane or anything. It just has a single ejector in there, not double. You don't need that. It has just a, a very strong ejector. Um, we had zero failures to feed, fire, extract, or eject. This has been a 100% reliable rifle in all the situations that we put it through. Um, we did a handful of ammo types from, uh, from Winchester. We did standard M80 ball. We did Winchester Deer Season XP was the big one. And uh, we did a couple other hunting ammos as well. And yeah, uh, no hiccups whatsoever. The barrel has a one in 10 twist. And that means that you're gonna be able to stabilize a lot of those big uh, rounds. One of the reasons that people should look at a carbine like this is for hunting, especially for hunting um, animals that come en masse like uh, hogs. And so if you wanna be able to run some big soft points 
from any of the major manufacturers, like 180 grain, 175 grain, maybe up into the 200s, kind of edging up past 200, this barrel with its one in 10 twist should be able to handle whatever weights that you get into. If you find some that it, uh, it fails to stabilize, please let us know. Uh, I'd be kind of curious to see if it can handle the 220s or the 230s. I wouldn't expect it to, but I don't know. The, uh, the PSA that I tested recently um, with a, an 18 inch, one in 10 twist barrel had no trouble with the 208s. So maybe the VLDs will work as well. You guys can uh, keep me informed. The handguard that you see shrouding the barrel has a lot of lightning cuts in here, and it has this whole uh, kind of Picatinny section at the top removed. This is part of the weight savings that you're gonna get on this rifle. You just get a little bit of Picatinny at the back, a little bit of Picatinny at the front, M-lock all the way around, and then this is a free float handguard, so this should aid accuracy. And as we could tell in practical testing, yeah, it works. Moving backward to the controls, this is where we start to get into some of the upgraded features of the Resolute. Uh, it used to be that they had multiple levels, like they would have a very standard one that was simplified and relatively cheap, and then you could step up to the high level, and all they sell now is high level. Uh, so this has all kinds of ambi parts, for example, including an ambidextrous mag release. So on this side, you have the plunger here, and then you can also hit it on this side with your thumb if you wanted to do that or with the, the palm of your hand. The bolt catch is a large paddle that's very easy to actuate. Um, and it's actually very light and easy to hit. Uh, this is one you could use your thumb if you want. You can smack it with your hand. And as Kedrick found out, it can also be kind of easy to hit the ambidextrous mag release if you're not careful. He might actually hit both. You could uh, charge the weapon and drop the magazine out at the same time. Just um, get used to it. It's not that bad. Uh, moving a little further backward, this has an ambidextrous 60 degree throw on its safety. So this goes safe and semi, and as you can see, it's not pointing straight up and down. This makes it very quick to actuate, and I think just a little bit easier to use overall. It's easier to switch back off put it back into safe when you're ready to go. Coming around up top, this is an upgraded charging latch. This came with the rifle. You can run this from either side, it's ambidextrous. And it's one that has a, kind of a gearing and just large uh, ears so you can quickly grab this and get it into position. If you are intending to run a scope, I recommend that kind of thing. It's just a whole lot easier to use. You're not trying to grab around the scope and pull it back. Just pick one side, yank it. Now, for the one control that you will want to swap immediately, that is the trigger. And that's actually what I did. I gave it a try at the, uh, the CMMG range day, and then I tried it here. The trigger that comes installed on this from the factory is a mil-spec trigger that, for a mil-spec trigger, is actually a pretty good example. It's relatively smooth, but it's got a lot of creep, and it's a heavy pull. If you want ultimate reliability and security, go for it. But if you intend to do precision work with your rifle, do something like this. This is the Trigger Tech Diamond single stage. Got nothing in the, the chamber, just so you can see, no magazine or anything. And this is a one and a half pound zero creep pull. So all I do is just apply a little bit of pressure and pop just a little bit of over travel. This trigger is a freak, and yeah, if you want the best, check it out. It's a little bit expensive, but um, yeah, it's really, really nice. Working our way down from the trigger, you can see that there's no trigger guard. This is billet, and so it is just milled right into this. And then we have a CMMG zeroed grip here on the back. This is almost exactly like the Magpul MOE. It's just kind of their version of it. Uh, good kind of vertical setup, so this is really good for prone. Um, Fits the hand really well, has a little bit of palm swell. I like it a lot. And it has a little compartment if you wanna put batteries and other things down there. Moving a little further back, we have an ambidextrous sling attachment here. So this would be good for your single pointers. Um, there really aren't any other sling attachment points on here anywhere. So if you wanna add something, you'll have to uh, put some kind of adapter here on the rail. I'm not sure how you could attach a QD socket on the back, but if you figure anything out, please let me know. This is CMMG's ripstock. It's made entirely of aluminum, even the butt back here. So yeah, it, it's pretty hard. Uh, but this is a pretty cool little setup. It works like your average collapsible stock. So you press the button, you can have different lengths of pull. If you're wearing body armor, you can bring it in. If you're tall, you can bring it out. 
uh, but this does have a couple extra party pieces. First off, if you have this stowed and you really want to quickly get into action, you just pull. You don't have to press any buttons at all. So you just push on it and it backs out. Also, you can set your individual length of pull by using one of the included screws. On the underside, you have these positions and you can put a stop screw in there. So if you were a bit on the shorter side and you wanted to hit that exact spot, you can have a screw attached and when you pull it back, it'll just hit that one spot and stay. Pretty cool. But we do get to the, uh, the painful point on this. Uh, the price of beauty is sometimes painful. This is a pretty cool looking stock and I guess it's relatively lightweight, but this has no rubber. And as you can see, it is just a thin piece of aluminum. This is fine when you're standing and when you're kneeling and when you're you know, taking those kinds of shots off a bench or whatever, and you got it right into the meat here, fine. However, when you go prone, this is pretty darn painful. So CMMG, I'm asking you guys, please come up with some kind of rubber butt pad back here. For myself, since this has a couple of um, screw holes going through the back, I might see if I can somehow fit a, uh, like a Pockmeyer decelerator or a limb saver back there and shave it down to fit. Um, I really want some extra comfort. I do a lot of my shooting prone and um, having just kind of a, a thin blade of metal punching into your collarbone is pretty awful. Now let's talk about how I outfitted this particular rifle, why I chose some of the things on here and how well they worked. Now you've seen probably in previous videos already that this did work really, really well. I tried a couple different scopes on here. I did the Falcon Endura right. three and a half to 25 by 56. That was great. And it was the real uh, kind of party piece that showed how accurate this rifle was. We had no issues getting on target at longer distance. Uh, the rifle was up to it and we were able to see very precisely and to put those bullets exactly where we wanted, even though they're moving out kind of slow from this 16 inch barrel. But we did also test out this Zero Tech Vengeance 1 to 6 by 24. This is a kind of a chonky looking LPVO, but it's actually not all that heavy. And it has just some wonderful features like really big, easy to use um, uh, turrets for elevation and for windage. It has an illuminated reticle on the inside and it's a good blend of long, you know, kind of medium long distance and close distance in its reticle. So it has a horseshoe in the middle and a dot that really draws the eye when you're dealing with uh, your close range targets. But then if you want to be able to deal with some of those longer ones, you can crank this up to six and then you have uh, some extra stadia. You have a relatively simple reticle that uh, just gives you some drops and a little bit of windage. And it's really most of what you would need in order to take some, uh, some medium range shots on medium sized game. The Vengeance is sitting in a lightweight 20 MOA compensating mount from Athlon, love it. And then the other sighting system that we tried out were these um, Ultradyne C4 sights. These go above and beyond. These are metal. There's no plastic anywhere uh, in any of these. And uh, yeah, these are built to be extremely tough, but also extremely precise. The back sight actually has M80 ballistics built into a cam. So if you want to be able to take shots anywhere from 50 meters out to uh, 600 yards, I think, then you can just dial this cam and it'll it'll set the correct ballistics in the rear sight. And as we tested, it really does work. Moving up front, this awesome. is the UTG overbore <laughs> bipod. I've talked about this a whole bunch, uh, but this is one that I highly recommend. The rifle wants to self level under it. It's very stable and it allows uh, for extra movement if you wanna be able to pan through moving targets. Again, you can check out that full review. I'll put a link to it up here. In the box, you're going to get a manual and you're going to get a, a larger PMAG. But I recommend if you pick one of these up, go ahead and get one of the small PMAGs as well. This is a 10 rounder. And uh, this is gonna be great for when you're shooting prone. You can get pretty high on bipods like this in order to get up over uh, tall magazines like this. But there are just times when you have different obstacles like rocky terrain, a 10 round magazine is just gonna be easier to work with and you're not gonna bonk it into the ground. Now for one of the obvious things that I kind of glossed over, the coloration that you see. This is Midnight Bronze Cerakote. 
and this is not an optional charge on top of the rifle. You can pick what color you want. Yes, they have black, they have uh, some other kind of light colors, they have some range friendly colors, ones that really stand out that are more sports car like. Uh, but then you get some of these that are like camouflage. This is one that would disappear into an Oklahoma forest, and I'm really happy about that. I love camouflaged rifles. In my case, I like to Duracoat mine, but since this came with an ultra flat Cerakote finish, uh, yeah, this is just ready to go right out of the box. Some of the other uh, kind of intangibles that we should talk about. Uh, first off, we have a lifetime warranty that is transferable to other folks, and it covers defects. So if you run it over with a tank, that one's on you but if there is something wrong with the rifle, they'll fix it. And this is where I actually got to test this out. Um, this was running 100%. I never had a failure when it came to firing or anything, but I was not able to run the charging latch manually. It felt just sticky. So they figured it out pretty quickly by just talking to me uh, where it might be happening. It was uh, just this one little pin in the, uh, the bolt. So they sent it to me really quickly. I was able to swap it out myself. I didn't even need any special tools. I just popped the pin in and it has run 100%. Uh, as you can see, this is continuing to run really smoothly. There was just a little bit of a, a hiccup in there, something that was creating just a little bit too much friction. They fixed it, the end. So that was really nice to see. Even though this is a pretty rifle, something that I uh, would be very proud to take out to the range and show off, to me, this is all about function. With its eight pound weight and its ease of controls and its reliability and the way that it functions, its precision, this is something that I'm going to take out hog hunting. I would be happy to take this out on a deer hunt. Um, yeah, this is going to be very versatile and very functional. And if you have been looking for one of those rifles that is kind of a do-all, the one rifle that can take care of a whole bunch of different potential either, you know, threats or different game that you want to take, I really think that you should take a close look at the CMMG Resolute. These little AR-10s are getting better every day, and this one proved its mettle out on the range, and when it comes to getting it out on a ranch, I think it's just going to be stellar. Thanks a bunch for watching, you guys. If you have any questions about the rifle, please put them in the comments below. Also in the comments, I'm going to have all the various bits and bobs that I've attached to this. If you want to pick any of those up, I will see you guys around. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.